Chapter 4, Section 1, Combining Functions and Function Composition. When we say combining functions, what we mean is that we can operate on functions, meaning that if I were to give you two functions, you can add them together, you can subtract one from the other, you can multiply them together, you could even divide one by the other. We know that you can do this on real numbers already. You can take two real numbers, you can add them together, and your sum will be a real number. You can subtract a real number from another real number, and your difference will be a real number. You can multiply two real numbers together, and your product will be a real number. And, of course, you can divide a real number by another real number, as long as it's not zero, and your quotient will be another real number. Well, similarly, you can do this on functions. You can add two functions together. You can subtract one from another. You can multiply. You can also divide. So to get us started, allow me to give you two functions. All right, I've given you two functions. I've named one of them f and the other one g. Now keep track of these two functions because we'll be using them a lot for the next couple examples. Now, if you notice, function f is a linear function. It's written in mx plus b form. The graph of function f, you know, would be a line with a slope positive 3 and y-intercept negative 7, while function g is a quadratic function. So we know that its graph would be a parabola, a parabola in this case opening upward because the leading coefficient of this quadratic function is positive. So what we're going to do first to get us started is we are actually going to find a function value. Now, when we say find a function value, that's the same thing as saying find an, a particular output. I'm going to ask you to find an output. Um, in order for you to find that output, I'm going to have to give you an input. So here is the first thing I'll ask you to find. F plus G at negative 2. Uh, basically what this notation means is I want you to find the value of this function. f plus g is the name of the function. Find the value of that sum function at negative 2. In other words, negative 2 is your input. You find the output. So the way this plays out is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to take negative 2 and you're going to want to plug negative 2 into f and also plug negative 2 into g and then add your results. So something like this, f at negative 2 plus g at negative 2. So notice with my notation what I mean is we're going to plug negative 2 into f first. We're also going to plug negative 2 into g and whatever we're getting as a result we will, we will add. So plugging negative 2 into f looks like this. 3 times negative 2 minus 7. Right there is my work for plugging negative 2 into function f. Don't forget we need to add that result to uh, my result that I get when I plug negative 2 into function g. When I plug negative 2 into function g, it looks like this. Negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2. Let's continue with this arithmetic. So this is what negative 6 minus 7 plus and the negative 2 squared is positive 4 and then 2 times negative 2 is minus 4. Let's continue. So then this gives us negative 13 plus 0. Let me move the screen up a little bit here if I can. Uh, there we go. So then to finish this off, uh, you can see that the final answer is negative 13. This is the function value. Let's see if I could zoom out a little bit here so you can capture the entire screen here. If I can here. Uh, bear with me. Okay, I managed to zoom out a little bit. This is the entire problem. Um, so you can see we were given function f and function g. We had to find the function value of this function, f plus g, when the input is negative 2. Now, I just want to 
just to kind of remind you that negative two is your input, it's what you plugged in, and negative 13 is the output, or we like to call the function value. All right, I'm gonna give you another example using um, function f and function g again, okay? But I'm gonna have you find something else, so hang tight. Okay, we're back. Now, don't forget f of x is still 3x minus seven and g of x is still x squared plus two x. This time around, I'm gonna have you find something different. Uh, this is the function value uh, that I want you to find this time, f minus g at four, okay? This will be done quite uh, similar to the previous problem. Basically, the only difference is, well, it's not f plus g, but it's f minus g, and also notice that your uh, input value is four. All right, so this is gonna be the following. Take four, plug it into f, and then uh, subtract what you get when you take four and plug it into g, all right? So let's see if I can show you how this works out. When you plug four into f, it looks like three. Uh, excuse me, let me see if I can use yellow here. Okay, so we take four, plug it into f, so it'll be three times four minus seven, and then don't forget we have to subtract. Um, let's see here. Ah, just trying to get the right color. All right, got it. So we're going to subtract what we get when we plug four into g. So it'll be four squared plus two times four. All right, cool. Let's continue working. Uh, this arithmetic turns out to be three times four, which is 12 minus seven. We have to subtract this time around what we're going to get when we uh, add, uh, excuse me, when we plug four into g. The four squared is 16, um, and then two times four is eight. Now we have to be super careful here to subtract all of g of four. So you may wanna put parentheses here because we have to subtract the result. Um, maybe I should have put parentheses uh, in the previous line as well. So be very careful about those parentheses so that we remember to um, not, not make a sign error there. All right, so uh, 12 minus seven is five minus uh, 16 plus eight is 24. Cool, so then five minus 24 is negative 19. This is the answer, this is the function value. When you plug four into this difference function, f minus g is a difference function, and when you plug four in, you get negative 19 out. Okay, everybody, so um, f is still 3x minus 7, g of x is still x squared plus 2x. This time around, I want to know if you can find um, f times g at 3. So again, this is you finding a function value. This time around, 3 is your input. Notice that you're plugging 3 into a product function, f times g. Now, I'm going to challenge you to pause this video right here, try this out on your own, and then I'll check back in with you in just a few seconds. So go ahead and pause the video, give this a shot. Okay, so let's see how you did. When you plug 3 into f, it looks like this. 3 times 3 minus 7. That's a little sloppy, but 3 times 3 minus 7. Now, that's what I get when I plug 3 into f. I also have to plug 3 into g, and that would look like 3 squared plus 2 times 3. Again, excuse my sloppy handwriting. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, you get here, uh, I'm going to skip a little bit of arithmetic here. Um, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 7 is 2. And so it's going to be that result times, you know, 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, so it would be 9 plus 6, which is 15. So we can see that 2 times 15 is 30. 30 is the answer. I hope you did well. Uh, 30 would be your output 
your function value, and three is your input. Let's do this one more time. Okay, everybody, the same two functions we've been dealing with. Uh, this time around, um, this will be the last kind of example like this. Please find f divided by g at negative 5. f divided by g is a difference function, and you are plugging negative 5 in. All right, give this a shot. Please um, pause the video, give this a shot, and I'll check in with you in just a second. All right, we're back. Um, you can see the solution here um, written out for you. Um, so we're plugging negative 5 into f. That's going to be your numerator. Plugging negative 5 into g, and that'll become your denominator. When I plug negative 5 into f, 3 times negative 5 minus 7 is negative 22. That's my numerator. When I take negative 5, plug it into g, it's negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5. That is 25 minus 10, which is 15. The final answer is negative 22 fifteenths. Good job.